In this video, I will demonstrate the techniques and discuss the fundamental principles for installing solid rivets. Proper layout and hole preparation are a first critical step in ensuring a quality job. We're going to describe how to select the correct length of a rivet, describe how to select the correct bucking bar for the job. I will demonstrate how to set the rivet gun. Then I'll demonstrate the uh, riveting process. And then we'll discuss the inspection criteria to ensure that we have done our riveting process to an acceptable standard. Rivet length selection. The diameter of the rivet is given in the instructions, so all we have to do is to select the correct length. So I take a rivet and I uh, will insert it. I like to insert it through the sheet that is, uh, has a hole that's been properly prepared the number 21 drill for a 5 30 seconds inch rivet and it's a clearance hole so the rivet falls through nice and evenly easily. I'll take a uh, longer rivet, nice to have a longer rivet so you can uh, handle it easier in your hand. Set it alongside the rivet I've stuck through and look at the uh, back side and see that it is sticking out greater than one diameter but less than two diameters. So it's approximately one and one half diameter sticking out the back side. This will ensure that I have enough material to form the proper shop head. Now that I've selected the correct rivet length, I'll need to select the correct bucking bar. The correct bucking bar, uh, bucking bars comes in different weights and different shapes. You can have uh, light bucking bars uh, that are various shapes and uh, and sizes, you want to pick one that's comfortable in your hand and that will fit to the application which uh, you are riveting. For our purposes here, I'm going to select a, a nice heavy uh, rectangular bar that fits in my hand and that I can easily control onto the uh, coupon area where I'm working. Setting the rivet gun is done by uh, Taking a rivet guns come in light and heavy uh, hitting styles. So we'll take ours. Ours is a 3x gun. Uh, we'll insert the rivet set in it. Ensure that I have the correct set for our purposes. I'm installing a 530 seconds MS20470 AD5 diameter rivet. So it's a 530 seconds rivet with a universal head style. So I'm going to be using a universal head snap that has a 470 written on it and it will either say 4705 for 530 seconds or it will say 470 and have a 530 seconds indicating that it is a correct snap to use for a 530 seconds rivet. Install the beehive or the uh, safety spring onto the gun. Don't tighten it too tight. Just a few turns is all that's needed. we Will stop the uh, rivet set from falling out when you're handling it and it will stop it from becoming a projectile if you accidentally hit the trigger while the air is plugged in. That's an important safety step. So we've got, uh, we've selected the correct rivet gun and uh, got the bar and with the correct rivet we're going to set the gun. To set the gun have a block of wood, 2 by 4 or 1 by 4 or some piece of scrap wood. Don't use the workbench. Plug in the air line to the gun and I'm going to turn it down First, make sure that it's hitting not too hard, and then you're going to pull the trigger fully. Uh, and then it's going to, uh, by listening to the sound of the gun and how it's hitting, you'll determine whether it's hitting uh, soft or hard. So I'm going to pull the trigger here, and I've got, of course, I've got my hearing protection in, and I'm wearing safety glasses. So hitting very lightly, so I'm going to have to turn it out a fair bit. There it seems like it's hitting a little bit too heavy, so I'm going to turn it back in a couple notches. A couple more notches. So it's just by hearing that you uh, determine the uh, hitting strength of the rivet gun as you're setting it. Looking down at their block of wood, I see that I, I'm making a fairly good impression into the wood, meaning it's hitting hard enough, but the wood's not splitting so that I'm not hitting it too hard. So I've that's how you set the gun. It's strictly a, a trial and error thing by ear. Looking at the rivet set, I want to make sure that it is uh, free of all foreign material inside there. There's no uh, masking tape or wood 
fibers that are in there and that is not damaged by uh, other uh, file damage or other marks on the, on the rivet set, that I've got a good serviceable rivet set. I place the rivet into the hole. I'll uh, going to be putting the rivet gun onto the manufactured head side here. And positioning my body, I like to have my knees slightly bent and my body nice and uh, square to the work area where I'm working. I just like to support, if I can, the rivet gun using my free hand onto the aircraft. And I like to keep my arm, my wrist nice and straight and my arm into, the, uh, into, the, uh, my, into my body for control. For demonstration purposes, I've left the protective plastic on the sheets so that you don't get the glare on the video from the, uh, from the lights. But normally, the protective sheets, uh, protective plastic would have to be removed from the sheets, obviously in between, as well as on both sides. Rivet is inserted. The person on this side here, who's the riveter, has uh, got the gun perpendicular and, and uh, is ready. And the bucker on the other side would hold the bucking bar perpendicular to the work surface and onto the rivet head and about the center of the bucking bar. If uh, there's only one person doing the riveting, in this case, the, like I'm doing here, I just go ahead when I feel comfortable, I pull the trigger. If there was two people, the person on the rivet gun would ask the other person to say, ready, and the other person, the bucker on the bucking bar would say, go, and the riveter would pull the trigger for one to three seconds uh, to begin the riveting process. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do the riveting process. I'm just going to check that I'm perpendicular, that my gun, uh, my bar is uh, onto the rivet and uh, nice and perpendicular, and then I'm using my fingers onto the uh, coupon or onto the aircraft structure to support the bar so it doesn't go sliding away. Ready? Go. Stop. Remove the bucking bar from this side here. The, the riveter could keep it the rivet gun onto the manufactured head and you take a look at the other side and you see is it enough or is it does it need more it's always a good idea to stop a little bit earlier than it is to over rivet right off the bat in this case here I can see I need a little bit more so give it another short burst and uh, that's the riveting process now the inspection criteria uh, it's basically in three categories. Uh, I inspect the manufactured head for damage. I inspect the shop head, the one that I've just formed for damage. And I inspect the sheet for damage. The manufactured head can get damaged uh, if I uh, am not pushing hard enough on the rivet gun. And uh, how I make sure that I'm pushing hard enough on the rivet gun is that as I'm uh, Start, before starting the riveting process, I am pushing the, uh, the sheet so it's bending slightly in this direction here with, say, two pounds of force, and the person, the bucker on this side here, is pushing back with one and a half pounds of force. Or if I'm pushing with four pounds of force on this side, they're pushing back with three and a half pounds of force on the other side, so there's just a slight bit of more force on this side, and it is evident by a, uh, a little bit of a distortion, the sheet bending in, in the uh, direction of the uh, bucking bar. By not having enough pressure on the uh, manufactured head, the rivet snap can start to jump on the head and damage the head. If the uh, rivet set is the wrong size, if it's undersized, it'll damage the head. If the rivet set is oversized, it'll damage the sheet by leaving a mark. If I rivet gun uh, set is the correct size, but I'm not holding it perpendicular, I'm holding it off, off to one side, It'll damage the sheet. The uh, shop head can get damaged by the bucking bar sliding off part way, causing a, a mark on the shop head. Uh, the, the shop head could be under, undersized, meaning it hasn't achieved full diameter. And remember, the diameter of the uh, shop head needs to be one and a half times the diameter of the rivet. So for a 5 30 seconds inch rivet, I can check the diameter by using another rivet, sticking it beside, seeing that it's greater than one diameters, but less than two. Or I can use a rivet, uh, a ruler, 
and measure the diameter across the rivet for a 5 30 seconds rivet, that'd be 1 and 1 half diameter, so 5 30 seconds is 1560 force. So I can measure that. The height of the rivet is supposed to be 1 half diameter, so for a 5 30 seconds inch rivet, it'd be half of 5 30 seconds is 5 64, so it'd be 5 64 inch high. So I can measure uh, the height and the diameter of the rivet to ensure and achieve that acceptable standard. The uh, sheet damage can also occur when the bucking bar comes off the, uh, the shop head here and the riveting gun is still going. That will cause sheep distortion or bucking bar marks on the, on the back side of the sheet. Uh, over riveting, riveting too much can cause sheet distortion. Uh, by because the rivet is swelling out too much, it causes the sheet to start distorting. So we have um, manufactured head damage caused by various things. You have shop head damage caused by the various things, and you have sheet damage caused by uh, various things that I've just described to you. So here we have installed an acceptable five three seconds inch diameter rivet into a coupon, and uh, that's all there is to installing solid rivets.